So you want to be a better assassin, huh? Well, that means you want to get the kills. And in real life, I might arrest you, but in Smite, that's great. A good assassin in the right hands can absolutely wreck the enemy team. And today, I'm going to show you five tips on how to improve your assassin gameplay so you can go ahead and pwn noobs. A lot of good Smite players already do the things I'm about to talk about, but they just don't put words on them or make them into rules. And the reason I'm doing that is because there are a lot of new players who want this information, and this will be a great video for them to reference in improving their assassin gameplay immediately. I want to just mention this one caveat, which is all of these tips work for me, and they come from my experience of playing Smite, and I want you guys to remember that. For those of you who comment in the comment section on tips on how to be a better assassin, speak from your own personal experience. That way you actually have something to go back on when you're discussing why it works for you and why you like it that way. Now just like in my How to Be a Better Guardian video, the first way to be a better assassin is to understand the assassin's mentality. What the hell dog never you talking Talk about boy, what the hell's assassin's mentality? Nah. Well, I'm glad you asked, viewer, who is obviously a average representation of the people watching my channel. The best way I can describe the assassin's mentality is what you guys already know of from assassins in popular culture, in movies, in other video games, and books, etc. You sneak into the house, you kill the old guy with a lot of money, you take whatever you're gonna take, and you get out of there. You don't wait around and start reading Darwin from his library and sit in his freaking chair smoking his pipe. Now, if we translate that in smite terms, it's basically you get in, you go to the backline damage dealer, you kill them very quickly with your full combo or a poke combo enough to get them out of the fight and then you retreat to safety. This is the classic assassin's mentality and if you do this you will perform much better in your future games. But a lot of newer players don't have a grasp on this yet and that's why when they go and gank somebody or they, they go for a kill and they don't get it they just stay in the fight and the problem is they cannot sustain the same way a warrior or a guardian or some of the heavier classes can and it puts them in a position where they die very quickly and over and over again, leading that other enemy team to snowball pretty hard. Now what snowballing means, for those who don't know, is just that an enemy team, or your team, basically is getting a lot of kills, and they're getting increased value from those kills over and over again, until the game is so lopsided that pretty much it's like a snowball rolling down a hill that is very small, and eventually is so big that it cannot be stopped. Now assassins are like surgeons, going through the arteries of enemy players to get to the main vein and lifeblood of that enemy team's attack strategy, whether it be a Zeus or a Raijin in the back line, or even somebody like an Amuzin Cobb who is just blowing your team up. And just like a surgeon, it's very execution heavy. A lot of times as assassins or junglers, you may only get that one chance to secure that kill onto the target you're trying to gank, and so you need to make the most of it. We'll talk about how you can do that in a couple of the later rules, but for now, that should be enough on the assassin's mentality to get you going. Now the number two way you can be a better assassin or jungler in Smite is selecting the right target to try and kill. It's very, very vital that you understand that this is actually as much a part of your success in getting the kill as actually going and executing your abilities. And the implications of this are quite huge. Given the fact that your goal is to kill a target as quickly as possible, get in, get out, and make sure that your team fight has swung your team's way, there are several factors to consider. One of them being what type of class are you going after and what are are they building? If somebody's building a lot of physical defense, as an assassin who does physical damage, unless you have a ton of penetration in your build, it may not be a smart idea to go after them and throw your entire kit onto a god that's going to be able to easily survive your damage. Also, you have to look at what actives are they building. In Season 3, it's easier to build actives because you don't have to invest gold into them, which means most of your targets are going to have either Sanctuary, Purification, or both, meaning that they can get out of your CC or they can avoid your damage completely completely for two seconds, which can really throw a wrench in your plan, especially if you're not expecting it. I mean, there's nothing better than getting that mutual like on Tinder and going on the date and finding out a little something unexpected they didn't exactly mention in their profile. You know, it is so nice to meet a guy who doesn't care about Swamp Butt. I mean, the fact that I have to shit 25-7, it doesn't matter. I mean, most guys don't care about that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Excuse me, I gotta go right now, but you are so cute. Just stay right there. Ah, Swamp Butt, is that a thing? That needs to be at the top of anyone's profile. If if you are shitting five times during our date, you need to let a brother know. I'm not saying we can't fall in love, I'm just saying that 
I, I gotta be prepared. I, I gotta have my mind right for this. And the same thing is true in Smite. When you're about to kill that player, but they have an Aegis available, and they pop it, giving them two seconds of immunity as they run under their tower, and the rest of their team starts aggressing back onto you in the back line, and your other teammates are like, see ya, bye. <laughs> the truth is, you want to know what your opponent can do to combat your gank, and you want to be prepared for that. Like you're going camping, you want to bring a sleeping bag. If you're attacking Zeus, you need to know that he does a ton of damage up front, but if you get to him or his damage is down, you could kill him really easily. However, Neath, also doing a lot of damage, can actually backflip away. So you have to maybe time your gank after she's backflipped, and that will allow you to secure kills much more effectively. Which leads me to my number three rule, which is learn how to position yourself in fights and time your attacks appropriately. In many ways, assassins are like predators, stalking their prey in the jungle, waiting for the opportune moment to strike. Now, in regards to positioning, I just think it's important everybody understands what you are as an assassin. You are a backline character or a sideline character, and what I mean is like hiding in the jungle or waiting for that fight to take place and then being able to beeline towards your target. You are not the front line, and I see a lot of assassins who I play with being super aggressive and going in trying to 100 to 0 their target, but all of the other teammates are looking at them. They all collapse and the assassin dies immediately. That's the easiest way to get yourself killed. Ain't nobody gonna stand for that. I mean, it's like dating somebody's daughter and then all of a sudden trying to have sex with them or make out with them in a furious fashion while their parents are right in front of you. I mean, the parents know that's gonna be happening. They know that's a part of life, but they're not gonna let you do it right in front of them. They're gonna smack you, get you out of the house. I mean, at least have a little tact. I mean, the truth is, when I kill people as a Loki in the back line and then I get out, people know that's just a part of the game. They know Loki can do that, and then they go on with the fight, adjusting accordingly. But if I tried to run face first into everyone and go to that back line, they would blow me up. They would be like, nah, nah, nah. You can't do it that way. No. The only exception to this rule may be gods like Sir Ket or Hun Bots who have some very good lockdown for single targets or multiple targets and if you're coordinated with your team via curse chat or you just play with each other a lot and know you have teammates that are going to follow up on your initiation. That would be my only exception for this rule. Otherwise, stay in the back line or the sideline and wait for that fight to take place, then pick your moment. Alright, so we've talked about positioning, let's move on to timing. Now I cannot stress this enough, but good timing is not a factor of luck, it is a factor of awareness. And the more you realize that, the more you will take responsibility for understanding the timers and escape options of the people you are trying to kill. We've all had those moments. You know you're trying to escape, you've basically gotten back to safety, but then an assassin shows up through the jungle and kills you when you have like 20 health left. You're thinking, how the heck did I escape that? Wow, I'm good. Oh yeah, okay, I'm dead now. Okay, right. That's not a coincidence. That's a result of really good timing. Of course, some moments will be lucky, but most of all, a good assassin is aware of when you are basically out of options. You're out of mana, you're out of defensive opportunities to jump away, you're out of sanctuary, and you're out of purification. Those are the times you want to go for your targets because they won't be able to do anything with you. And that goes back to positioning as well, because if you know that person's about to die and you could kill them, but you're halfway across the map, that doesn't really matter then, does it? What do you mean, don't matter, boy? I don't even know what the hot damn you're saying. I need a little bit of a sample. Come on now. All right, well, since you need an example, here's what I mean. Basically, if you're Fenrir and you go to gank somebody in the jungle, they have purification online, but they don't have sanctuary. You go ahead and use your ultimate and they use purification to get out of it. Well, your ultimate is on a lower cooldown than their purification. Use this knowledge to your advantage and gank them the next time your ultimate is available, knowing that their purification beads are down. And if your teammate knows what you're doing, there's a very good chance you will kill that target. It's very simple. That's what I mean. If you become a master of positioning and timing your ganks, as I just mentioned, you will become a much better assassin player. Now we've talked about how to select the right targets. We've talked about how to position yourself and come in at the right time when their abilities are down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Um, what I really mean is that it's, it's time to kill them, right? It's, it's time to go ahead and get the kill. And that leads me to my number four way of how to be a better assassin or jungler, which is understanding how to perform your character's full combos. Now remember, everything we've talked about in this video is how to support you in basically reaching that target that you need to kill and then killing that target. However, if you cannot maximize your god's damage, 
then you're going to have a very hard time securing kills consistently. This will result in a lot of games where you're going 12 and 2, and games where you're going 2 and 12, and kind of asking yourself, what am I doing wrong? Now, I want to elucidate this point from a comment that somebody made on my Sir Cat God guide that I have posted on my channel, Rain Day Gaming. They were basically saying that they've played Sir Cat and are on PS4 and just can't seem to kill anyone. The last game they played, they went 2 and 27, and even Squishy Player survived Sir Cat's full combo and that he must be doing something wrong please help. Now I answered him as best as I could, and I told him that practice makes perfect, and that's actually the truth, guys. I want you to understand that practice is the only way you get better at executing these combos, but the truth is there's another component, and that's knowing what the combos actually are. The truth is, as a veteran smite player, I know that if he's actually hitting a squishy with all of Sir Cat's combo, they are dying. There's no way that's happening, especially if he lands the basic attack at the end. So that means to me that he doesn't understand the actual order of how to perform her combo. And so that's why you need to find combo guides on YouTube or you need to ask somebody who knows. That's why I make how to play videos, which is basically a combo guide, a build and a gameplay all in one. And I also make combo tips, which is basically just straight the combos for the gods because I never knew Sir Cat's combo. Once I found it out, that's the gave me the impetus for this series because I'm like, how many people did not know this combo? I cannot be the only one. And so I decided to try and take that on for every god in smite so that this information was available to newer players. So again, it's the mechanical aspect of actually pulling off the combo and hitting the abilities, aiming them correctly, but then it's also the knowledge of how to combo and what order to do that combo in. Once you know the combo, it's just a matter of practice until your mechanical expertise becomes proficient enough to guarantee pulling it off. Now this video is almost over and I want to thank you guys for watching and supporting my channel with comments and views on videos like this. I think these are some of the best types of videos in Smite because we're growing in such a huge way and all of these new players are coming in and wanting more information and videos like this I think help give a great groundwork for newer players and a great refresher for older players as well. Of course if you want to subscribe and support me that is the best way to do it and also leave a like and share this video so your friends or people you play with have a little bit better or more complete knowledge of how to perform well when they pick up the assassin or jungle role on your team. Now that I'm done with that shameless self-promotion, I want to mention my very last rule, and that is to learn to adjust. Now that's very simple, it's very quick, and it's very to the point. We won't take much time on this, but this could be the most important rule I've mentioned out of any of the other ones in this video, and here's why. As an assassin, like I said, you have a very limited health pool, and things you do have to be pitch perfect. But but the truth is some teams are going to let you run around and just kill them. I mean, that's the truth. Some teams have no idea when you show up, they're not thinking about you, and they just get surprised and die every time. But you're also going to have teams that are aware of you and hyper aware of you. And if you try to make a move, they will all throw their ultimates on you and send you back to Assassin Hell. And in Assassin Hell, they make you just try to kill targets at very low health. But when you kill them, Kepri always saves them. And then he hops back to base and he spams VEL. He also throws up the GG emote. I mean, I mean, this is hell. Come on, what do you expect? Not only adjusting to the enemy team, but adjusting to your god and their playstyle will make you a much better assassin. If you're picking Thor, he can be a frontline bruiser, but if you're picking Sir Cat or Bakasura, you're going to have to pick your time more. You can't get caught out, and you're going to have to plan your strategy of attack rather than just go in and hope for the best. And that can also mean if you're getting a couple of early deaths because your ganks didn't work out, maybe slow it down. Maybe look for a different way to go about things. Don't just assume that the game is lost. Remember, never give up and never stop gaming. Do your best and forget the rest. These are things that are important as an assassin to understand because you pick that character. And yeah, it can be hard when you're a few levels down. But if you have patience, if you pick your place and your timing correctly, and you know how to use your god's combo, then you will always have a chance to succeed. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And because of the overwhelming popularity of the first video in this series, I will be doing a video for every single class in this same fashion. Let me know if you want to see mages, hunters, or warriors next in the comment section below. And as always, never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you guys next time.